Here it is, the last of the ranking videos for every position. You should know how it goes by now, but if you don't, we're ranking the best center from every team, assuming that everyone's healthy and focusing on mainly the starters for each team. So let's get into it. With number 30, the Clippers with Marcin Gortat. Five points? Five rebounds a game? As a starter? Next. 29, the Hawks with Alex Lynn. After going fifth overall a few years ago, there's no doubt that Lynn has been a bust. 28, the Hornets with Cody Zeller. Pretty much the exact same thing, except Zeller went fourth overall. 27, the Bucks with Brooke Lopez. I mean, Lopez technically plays center, but the man just stands around the three point line and waits to shoot the open shot. 26, the Nets with Jared Allen. The man's only 20, but he's already shown that he's a solid defender and can play great around the rim and in the pick and roll game. So he definitely has the potential to be a great center down the line. 25, the Wizards with Dwight Howard. Now it's hard to judge Dwight Howard's play since he only played nine games this year with back pain before going out with back surgery, but just basing this on how he played within those games, this is where he ends up. 24, the Kings with Willie Colley Stein. Stein's developed and gotten better every season, and he's become great around the rim and in transition. Now he's good, but I don't ever see him being anything more than a great role player. Number 23, Wendell Carter Jr. Carter's had a pretty good start to his NBA career so far. He's a guy that's good at everything, which is why he's drawn comparisons to Al Horford. Now while he's only a rookie, he looks like he's definitely got a bright future ahead of him. 22, the Cavs with Tristan Thompson. Thompson's not a great center, but he's not that bad either. Since LeBron's gone and Kevin Love's out with an injury, he's come out and had one of the better seasons of his career so far, putting up 11 points and 11 rebounds a game. He's a decent role player, but not too much more. 21, the Pacers with Miles Turner. Turner's one of those guys who's had huge hype and expectations around him for a while now, but he hasn't lived up to it, at least yet. Now he's always been a great defensive center, but his offensive game is still what needs the most work. Number 20, the Lakers with JaVale McGee! McGee's definitely slowed down since his hot start to the season, but he's still having the best season of his career. Putting up 12, 6, and 2.7 blocks a game on 63% shooting. Now it'd be great if he could have that same impact off the bench, since he can only play limited minutes, but he's come off the bench his entire career, and we've seen that he's not able to. 19, the Blazers with Yusuf Nurkic. Nurkic is putting up 15 and 10 this year in the best season of his career so far. And even with his development as a big man, it hasn't helped the Blazers really become any better as a team. Personally though, as the team's only true big man, he does do a great job of holding down the paint on both ends, so Damon McCollum can score like they do. Number 18. The Knicks with Ennis Cantor. Cantor's playing the best of his career right now as he's coming into his prime. Now, part of that is because somebody has to do the work on the still bad Knicks team, but that's not the point. The point is he's putting up 15 and 12, is one of the league's leading offensive rebounders, has had a good amount of 15 rebound games this year, and even a couple 2020 games. Number 17, the Suns with DeAndre Ayton. Even after Phoenix has added Aiden, they're on pace to have an even worse record than they did last season. Because they're tanking. But that's a different conversation. As for Aiden though, the men's look great to start out the season. Putting up 16 and 10 so far on 60% shooting. But since he's a rookie, it's not surprising that he still needs work on his consistency and finding better chemistry with Devin Booker. But once both of those things happen, and the Suns add Zion, they'll be on their way to being contenders. Number 16, the Heat with Hassan Whiteside. We've got to give credit to Whiteside for coming out strong after there were all those rumors about him getting traded. He's put up 13, 13, and nearly 3 blocks a game to start the season, and because of this, a lot of those rumors have died down. Now we just have to see if they can use him right in the playoffs this year. 15, the Raptors with Serge Ibaka. The Raptors have done a great job adjusting their lineup this year and moving Ibaka to center to take Jonas Valachunas' to spot. It's helped the entire team and helped Ibaka play a lot better than he has the past few years. He does a great job of running the floor and spreading things out on offense while he holds down the paint on defense. Number 13, the Thunder with Steven Adams. All right, I've said it a few times already. There's a lot of centers in the league having the best year of their careers right now, and Adams is one of them. Putting up 15 and 10 on 60% shooting. Steven Adams has done one of the best jobs in the league at developing his game over the past couple of years. He went from being a rookie who could only score on open looks, to developing great post moves, and being a great transition player on both ends. 
Number 12, the Mavs with DeAndre Jordan. The fact that DeAndre's outside of the top 10 tells you just how stacked the rest of this list is. But Jordan's taken his game to another level this year. He went from only being able to dunk, rebound, and block shots to now being able to dunk, rebound, block shots, and shoot free throws. All right, seriously. He's a big man that would be great on any team in the league, and he excels at running pick and rolls, and always shoots extremely high percentages from inside the paint. 11, the Grizzlies with Marc Gasol. A big part of what's made Memphis better than most people expected is that Gasol's continued to play at a high level even though he's 34 years old. He's never used his extreme athleticism to give him an advantage, so getting older hasn't really affected his game which is how he's still putting up 17 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, and 1.5 steals and blocks a game, all while shooting 40% from 3. Number 10, The Magic with Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic is by far having the best season of his career, putting up 21 and 11 on 55% shooting and 41% from 3, putting up career numbers in every single category. But the Magic still need to trade him. I've talked about this in other videos, and the fact that they're still a bad team, and he's in his prime. So with him playing this good, they need to get the most out of him while they still can. Number 9, the Rockets with Clint Capella. I don't think Capella would be as good as he is now on any other team, but he's a perfect fit for the Rockets. He gets mostly all of his points by running the floor in transition or in pick and rolls with James Harden or Chris Paul. And he's quietly been one of the most improved players this year. Putting up 18 points, nearly 12 rebounds, and 2 blocks a game, he might not have the greatest overall skill set, but in the Rockets system, he doesn't need it to be a top 10 center in the NBA. Number 8, the Pistons with Andre Drummond. Drummond's game is continuing to develop, and his and Blake Griffin's chemistry is getting better and better. He's putting up 18 and 15 and a half rebounds a game. And the man looks like he's taken his game to the next level this year, and is looking like he's putting together his second consecutive year as an all-star. Number 7, the Spurs with LaMarcus Aldridge. Alright, there are a few people that were wondering why Aldridge wasn't in the Power Forwards ranking video, but that's because he's on this list. A lot of people still consider him a Power Forward, but he played center for a good part of last season, and he started out playing it for most of this season, so we had to put him on this list. But as for why he ranks here, LA was an all-star last year and is still playing great basketball, but isn't playing at that same level this year so far since he's got to share the ball and get used to playing with DeRozan. So it slightly drops him down on the list. Number 6, The Wolves with Carl Anthony Towns. Towns used to be thought of as a lot higher on the center's rankings, but the past couple of years have proved that to be wrong. The man's not a great defender, and there are some plays where he's just non-existent on the defensive end, no matter what the stat sheet says. He is better on the offensive side of things though. Now we thought that the reason that his game stopped progressing was partly due to the fact that Jimmy Butler joined the team, but after it came out that Jimmy called out Towns' work ethic, it would make sense why he hasn't progressed. So Cat ends up here for now, and hopefully he can turn things around back to the other direction soon. Number 5, The Jazz with Rudy Gobert. Usually I would have ranked Gobert a few spots lower on the list, but after he's come out this season, playing just as good on defense as he was last year when he won the Defensive Player Award and he stepped up his game on offense, so I had to rank him higher. He's averaging 15, 12, and 2 on almost 70% shooting for the season. He's already a top 2 or 3 defensive center in the league, so if he can keep developing his offensive game like he has, he'll definitely rank a lot higher in the future. Number 4, the Nuggets with Nikola Jokic. The man is averaging nearly a triple-double, with 16 points and nearly 10 rebounds and 8 assists a game right now. He's without a doubt the best passing big man in the league, and has one of the best overall skill sets out there. Now he's gotta work on keeping his shooting percentages higher, but besides that, if he keeps developing the way he is, he's gonna be an all-out star in no time. Number 3, The Warriors with DeMarcus Cousins. Alright, he's the biggest snake in the league, and he hasn't played since the first half of last year due to tearing his Achilles. And that could cause him to come back a lot worse, but as of right now, basing his ranking off of last year, this is where Cousins ends up. He used to be the best center in the league, but things have changed. Number 2, the 76ers with Joel Embiid. If Embiid can stay healthy, the man is going down as one of the greatest centers of all time. Right now he's putting up 26, 13, and 2, and is just getting started. He's one of the most complete players in the league, and can do everything on the court from dominating the post, to shooting threes, to blocking shots. 
The man's only 24 and has only played a little over 200 actual basketball games in his entire life. So if he keeps progressing this fast, he's gonna be an MVP in no time. And finally, number one, the Pelicans with Anthony Davis. Now speaking of the most complete players, Davis has gotta be the most complete in the league. He's averaging 28 points, 12 rebounds, almost 3 blocks a game, 1.5 steals a game, and shooting a higher 3 point percentage than Kevin Durant. He's been unstoppable on the Pelicans, and it's been great to see him play there, but I'm ready for a trade to happen and see just how good he does on a real contender. And that's honestly the only way he's ever going to win an MVP, since, since these kinds of numbers haven't won him one already. Now as always, leave your thoughts on this list and comment down below any suggestions for future ranking videos or just videos in general that I haven't already done this year. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.